So I know we've already moved on to 2021, but I had the idea to do one more video talking about Disney pins in 2020, but not necessarily talking about pins that were released in 2020, but sharing almost every single pin I got in the year. I thought it'd be a kind of fun and interesting challenge to look through all of my messaging and transaction history and try and group all of my 2020 Disney pin acquisitions by month. To make things a little bit more easier and manageable, I decided to stick to strictly direct from Disney pins, so meaning no licensed pins, no lounge fly pins or fig pins, and then also no fantasy pins. And then I'm also calling this almost every single Disney pin because I'm sure I have also forgotten some throughout the year to include. So I put all the pins that I got on different boards grouped by month, and I just thought it'd be kind of fun to go through and share all of the pins that I got in the respective months, and you can kind of see the trends in my pin acquisitions throughout the year. And I do an updated pin collection video in November around my birthday, and I thought this was also a really good way to see like exactly exactly which pins are new in my collection. So obviously we have to start off with January 2020, a month full of hope, the start of a new decade. I got a pretty decent number of pins in January and quite a mixture of different types. So here is most of what I got in January 2020. You can see I got a number of hidden Mickey pins here, kind of completing some sets. Then I also have some Parks Limited Edition pin releases. I know these were all open edition pins I got for resale for very cheap. Uh, WDI Happy New Year pin, very happy that that doesn't have a dated year. I finally got this Splash Mountain D23 LE pin and thank goodness I got it then because um, I've not really been able to acquire any new Splash pins since prices have gone so crazy. I think this was another D23 pin. So at this, you know, kind of either starting some collections, I'm still waiting for this last Lamplight Lounge pin to be released. And then so there we have a little look at January. Then we move on to February, which it seems like I got even more pins than in January, although it kind of looks like the same just because so many of those pins are quite tiny, but also quite a wide assortment of different types of pins here. So here's everything from February. Started off getting some new limited edition pins from the parks, the monthly releases, Disneyland Paris Ellie, a pin from Japan. I was able to trade for all of these Tower of Terror pins, which are from Disneyland Paris. You can see I got some more hidden Mickey pins to fit with the sets that I was working on in January. Some very miscellaneous pins, including a little Lizzie McGuire one. This was the very first Grogu Baby Yoda pin released in the Disney parks. A little Disney store, Disney Eat set, and then you can see quite a number of Tiny Kingdom pins. So this, I believe, was Series 2 of Tiny Kingdom. I think definitely one of my favorites. I absolutely love that Alice in Wonderland ride vehicle. So then from February, we move on to March. And what you'll notice about March is that there are significantly less pins on here. Um, and I think everybody pretty much knows the reason for that. So March was where everything kind of came to a little bit of a standstill and a stop. So I got a few hidden Mickey pins. I got a few more pins that I traded for. A Disney Studio Store Hollywood pin. And then this was actually a Flower and Garden mystery pin. So you can see really not that much new in March. And kind of, you know, there wasn't that that much that was available in March. But then in April, I did end up getting some more pins. April was kind of when more new pin releases came online and then also when I kind of went on eBay and found some pins that I had wanted that were on the cheaper side not necessarily as a coping mechanism but just for something you know to feel something <laughs> So here we have April's acquisitions here. Notably, these pins at the top are all limited edition pins from the Disney parks, but these were the first ones that were released on Shop Disney for everybody to purchase while the parks were closed. Then all of these other pins down here I know were eBay acquisitions, a kind of random assortment of mainly parks related things. I also got the full Galaxy's Edge Play Disney Parks app pins. I love collecting Galaxy's Edge pins, so it was almost like a little bit of a compensation for the lack of stuff going on in March, and kind of, you know, the, the world ending feeling. So I got a decent number of new pins in April, but in May, I got the least amount of pins out of any month. I think it was, I kind of had like a, you know, a little bit of a surge and like, oh, you know, I need some new pins. And then, you know, May was a little bit more of laying low. So I only ended up with these three pins here for May. This was a Shop Disney release, a limited edition Parks pins, and then these other two were eBay finds. So definitely took it a little bit slow in May. But then in June, things amped up a little bit again, and then we also got some good jumbo action here. 
So these were my new pins for June, a very diverse mixture, I'd say, of pins. We got our paper mover pin and our inside out pin and this uh, traction pin, which once again were Shop Disney limited edition pin releases. A number of these pins here I got from Shanghai Disneyland. I was able to trade for the Moana animator pin, got an older pin from D23. Around then I had just found out that this jumbo pin existed with a petrified tree at Disneyland, which most people know my kind of obsession with it. So this one was like a must acquire. It also matches very nicely with the little tiny Mark Twain pin. Then another kind of like mini jumbo pin. So June kind of turned things around. And then I could not fit these on the board for June, but I did also get these in June. This is an authentic set of Shanghai Disneyland grand opening pins. I was so excited to find an actual real one on eBay from a seller based in Shanghai. I really love having real authentic versions of pins that are super heavily faked. Then we move on to July, where we notably had Disneyland's 65th anniversary. Disney had initially announced they were planning on opening Disneyland exactly on the 65th anniversary, but as we all know, that did not go according to plan, but we still had the 65th anniversary pins released. So we got a decent number of new pins in July. We got some more Shop Disney pin releases here, some D23 pins and then also some more D23 pins down here. Some of the pins for Disneyland's 65th anniversary, some more pins from Shanghai Disneyland, and then I also had to find the authentic version of one of the other very few Disneyland petrified tree pins. Traded for this Emperor's New Groove pin, even though it would be released later on Shop Disney, and it's like on super sale now. A fun little goofy pin, trading pin, I found on eBay. So we got a decent assortment in July. Then we move on to August, which is comparatively a little bit more sparse. Pretty much the end of June, July, August, and then the beginning of September, I was really, really sick. I was dealing with hyperadrenergic POTS, which so thankfully I feel like I'm kind of back to myself now. But August physically was definitely not a very good month for me, but still kind of a, you know, a medium good assortment of pins. So here we have my August acquisitions. Once again, we have some more Shop Disney releases that were of the Disney Park pins, a new Disney Studios or Hollywood pin release, I decided to get the Frozen Castle Collection pin. I love how big and jumbo these ended up with. And then because Disney starts Halloween in August, we have some Halloween pins. I absolutely love the aesthetic of the designs from this season. I got two of the Alien Remix pin releases, a really cool Disney Movie Rewards Coco pin, and then also traded for a Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout Disneyland 65th pin there in August. Then we have September, and I'd say September is kind of, you know, similar overall to August. And the majority of these were actually limited edition pin releases. So here's the selection for September. We again had more of the Disney Parks pins released on Shop Disney. I decided to get this other pin from Disneyland 65th, which I love this so much. We got more Halloween pins, more Coco pins, and then finally a new PTD pin, and it has Cusco on it. Semi-random acquisitions, little rescuers pin, Tower of Terror. I think I traded for these two hidden Mickey pins, and this is where we had some more Tiny Kingdom. I bet these were Series 3 pins that came out, so I didn't end up getting too, too many pins from that set this month. Then we move on to October, which is mainly themed to Big Thunder Mountain Railroad and Coco. So I think October was a pretty good month in terms of the types of pin acquisitions and pretty special pins. So Big Thunder Mountain, I believe, was celebrating its 40th anniversary. We also got the mini main attraction pins for that. Was able to trade for the Big Thunder Mountain Tiny Kingdom pin. Also got another Tiny Kingdom pin. Some really amazing pin mail from Hong Kong Disneyland, including the world's greatest churro pin. I found one of the Grail pins that I had been looking for for so long from Tokyo Disney Resort. And then this here, I believe, is when the Ellie pin releases resumed releasing in the parks. A D23 pin, because I decided I caved and joined D23 with a super discount. Got some tiny pets pins that were actually from the Fairy Tales event. I was able to find that set at retail. And then we have a number of Coco pins down here. I was a really big fan of this mystery set. Then we have November. November was when I was kind of starting to finally return to actually feeling good. So I'd say definitely a little bit of a bump up in terms of the pin acquisitions. So here's our little November overview. So happy that they released a Zootopia Disney Sense pins. Not that many new Zootopia releases this year, but I was in love with this Goofy Movie Anniversary WDI pin. 
more cocoa pins. They had this gorgeous new series of open edition pins for Tower of Terror, another new fun Galaxy's Edge pin with more Galaxy's Edge and Disneyland from D23 set. And you can see quite a number of Tiny Kingdom pins here. I believe this was all from Series 4. So quite a number of them that I was able to trade for. Some I was able to get myself. Then we have some holiday pins on the corner, some of the newer 2020 releases. I was able to trade for all of these stained glass window pins. And then we have on the bottom some new Emperor's New Groove pins. We have an ornament from the advent calendar. And then this very overpriced Disney Store 20th anniversary pin set, including everybody knows. This is my favorite pin here. I almost <laughs> was sort of able to stick it on the cork board at the very corner here. And then finally, we end out the year with all of the pins that I got in December. So in December, the majority of these pins, whoops, are ones that I finally got in from the Celebrating 20 Years of Disney Pins pin event. So most of those were ones that I showed in my video. This pin here, it like just will not stay up on any of my boards, it always flops forward. The other ones that I did get from the event that I hadn't shown were ones that I either traded for or bought afterhand. Two of the other mystery trading card pins, and then I got the Navi River Pandora Shaman because even though I've never experienced Pandora, I still love the pins for that land and attraction. Did get some super cute holiday pins from the Disney Studio Store Hollywood. This is just another Pandora pin I found for a really good deal on eBay. I also found this Black Spire Outpost pin, which I think was one of the very first ones released on a lanyard. Ended up getting the super cute The Child at Disney Studio Star Hollywood pin, a beautiful cocoa pin from Shanghai Disneyland, another Disney Studio Star Hollywood pin, some a few straggling trades for Tiny Kingdom pins, and then the rest were Emperor's New Groove pins. So we have the cast member exclusive 20th anniversary. I finally was able to get the Yzma Midnight Masquerade pins, and those are so gorgeous. And then finally our Kronk cereal pin, which this is so cute with a little llama potion dangle. And that ends up our year in December. So that was almost all of the new Disney pins that I got in 2020. I hope this was interesting to kind of see, you know, the pins as they go throughout the months. 2020 was a very difficult year for very many reasons. And you know, 2021 is already presenting its challenges. As of yet, they have not released any of the new monthly limited edition 2021 pins. We have teaser names for what they're gonna be, but haven't seen the majority of them. So I'm very curious to see what they're gonna be, when they're gonna be released. And we'll see what this year of 2021 brings for us in terms of Disney pins. But thanks for watching!